Hi, today we're going to be taking a look at a HDI 120 blue light scanner uh, scanning some automotive plastic parts. So we're going to be scanning these parts here with the scanner and then bringing it inside of Space Claim to uh, turn these meshes, these 3D objects into uh, usable CAD data. So to get started we'll go ahead and <clears throat> let the scanner start scanning. So the scanning process takes about two to three minutes or so. Uh, so while the scanner is scanning, we will move on to uh, talking a little bit about the scan data that we're going to get and what we can do with it. Uh, so real quick, you can see that the scanner generates a 3D object uh, from the model, which you can see a series of images being projected to do that. And then the rotary stage rotates the part automatically for us. So we just have to scan an area. Uh, or press scan and the scanner will scan an area, move the part around, and then continue that process until it goes all the way around the part that we're scanning. So let's jump over here to our software called Space Claim. So if you notice right here, I have a 3D representation of that part sitting on our, uh, our workspace. So in order to convert this mesh, from uh, a mesh to a CAD object, we have to do a process called reverse engineering, uh, which is pretty simplistic. Basically, we're going to create a profile through the object. Um, let's take one of these bottom profiles, for example. And if you notice, uh, the software automatically recognizes where CAD should be. So it's just as simple as uh, grabbing that CAD or somewhat modifying it if we want to change the part a little bit. Uh, for instance, some of the data that you're dealing with may not be perfect. Uh, you know, this may not be exactly a circle. It could be slightly distorted to one side or the other. So we can make the call whether to use what we have or actually put a circle in like so. So when we put this circle in, we can look and see uh, there may be some points at which it drifts off slightly or it may be good to go. Um, which let's just redo it real quick to show a little bit better representation of where this circle should be. Alright, uh, so we can see there may be some drift. It looks like it's a little bit bigger over here um, and it may be right on line um, on this side or slightly bigger there and then true back here at the top. So we have to figure out what we want, what we think is going to be correct and then use that. <clears throat> so once we have that 2D information that can be converted into a solid object by pushing or pulling the part. Uh, so we can see we can pull that out and it creates a 3D model for us. So just moving ahead a little bit, uh, I've already gone ahead and built out a basic 2D shape of the outside profile of this part uh, doing this exact same process. So if we come over here to the plane that that was created on and look at a 2D profile of it, you can see that this CAD was created, however, I made some uh, slight modifications to it to where I deemed that uh, this part may be. Now this not, may not be true to what it should be, but this is kind of what I went ahead and uh, decided to put in. And we can make some modifications. For instance, you see this is a little bit too big here. Um, some of the fillets aren't in it, but we'll handle all that here in just a moment uh, really easily. So let's hide that mesh off and then go back to our 3D tool. So if you notice, uh, we didn't close off any of these parts. Uh, you can see we've got a lot of lines hanging off on the inside and outside. Space Claim doesn't care about that. Uh, all it cares about is having a closed off loop that we can use, uh, which is what we have here, uh, which we can now revolve around a central axis to create our full 3D object just like that. Now, if we bring our mesh back, we can see, okay, maybe there's some places we need to make some modifications. For instance, this is far too tall, so we can just pull that up to a given 
position uh, in order to help modify it just a little bit. So we can change the positions here. If we want to change the positions on these pieces as well, uh, it's a very simple process of modifying all this either by sight or if you want to move this based upon the mesh, we can actually modify it and move it to particular portions of the mesh. Uh, it's the same for uh, fillets. So if we want to pull that fillet into where it needs to be, we can either just change the radius or actually move the position of that fillet in order to make it correct. Uh, so really simply uh, and easily we can come in and generate these 3D models. Uh, so this is just a basic crash course in how space claim works. There's a lot of other things we can get into, for instance, dealing with the surface on the front, you know, creating a lofted 3D surface to cut that out uh, and things of that nature or doing boss cuts around. Uh, for instance, when we pull these pieces out, we'll build out some basic bosses and then do a cut all the way around the 3D part. Uh, so it's your, your basic simplistic uh, CAD processes that you're going to be doing on a regular basis anyways. However, what we're doing here is we're referencing that back to a known object, a physical object, a real world part uh, that is being represented in CAD space for us to uh, check out and modify. Uh, so the one final thing to look at here for this particular video presentation is uh, being able to cross check all this. So obviously we can come and modify these pieces to the existing model however we want to you know say we want to change this radius uh, and we can tell it to go up to a particular area uh, but say it's important for you to check the overall fit you know to look at a 3d uh, heat map so to speak a color map of these two parts well we can do that very easily by selecting our deviation tool which is going to allow us to compare the mesh to the 3D body. We'll let that go ahead and get started uh, and while that's working uh, we can well we'll just go ahead and give it just one more moment okay so it went ahead and came on up uh, so We'll go ahead and uh, look at this a little bit. So you can see these highs and lows. You can see these red marks, uh, these blue marks, and these green marks. They are the deviation from our nominal values, our you know, ID and OD is kind of what it represents here, our inside deviation and our outside deviation. Uh, not, so we can modify these numbers however we want to. We have those two numbers sitting right here. Uh, and we can set them up for our tolerances on the part uh, per se or if you want to do some more uh, analytical study on the part you can bring those tolerances either further out or further in to better check what may be going on on your parts themselves so uh, that's a really great feature that kind of completes the overall 3d reverse engineering package uh, and uh, before I forget Let's jump back over here and take a look at our completed part. So you can see we've got our 3D model here. Uh, now this is just a quick and easy and simple way to create the part. We really just let it go ahead and scan and then build out that model and you can see what we've gotten here. Uh, and we took that, which is pretty much the exact same thing that we had over here with this mesh and converted that into a uh, basic CAD object which we have here and we can continue to modify however we need to. So thank you very much for taking a look at this video demonstration of the HDI 120 with Space Claim. If you have any further questions feel free to contact us here at GoMeasure3D. Thank you very much for taking a look at this video and you have a great day.